Hi, everyone. My name is Michaela Mallow. My colleagues Annette Ozalton and Kelsey Vaughn and I are thrilled to welcome you to this webinar. ThinkWell is a health systems development organization focused on helping countries to achieve universal health coverage. We focus on the intersection between health financing and other key elements of the health sector. The topic of this ThinkWell webinar is how to use the Immunization Delivery Cost Catalog, or the IDCC. The webinar is supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation under the Immunization Costing Action Network, or ICANN project. During this presentation, we will provide you with a brief overview of the ICANN project. We will present the IDCC methodology findings and main takeaway messages, and we include a web demonstration of the IDCC. We will have ample time for Q&A and discussion at the end of the presentation. We encourage you to submit any questions you may have during the webinar using the questions feature, which is located just below the audio feature on the control panel if you are using the desktop version or at the bottom of the phone if you're using the mobile version. We will not be using the raise your hand feature. Throughout the presentation, there will be a couple of polls. I've just initiated the first one. Please select your response to the question, where are you joining from? Great. Um, so as you can see, we have people joining from all over the world. We have, it looks like, 78% from North America and Europe, 11% from Asia, and 11% from Sub-Saharan Africa. Welcome again to everyone. Uh, now let's get into the presentation. The Immunization Costing Action Network, or ICANN's objectives are twofold to increase the visibility, availability, understanding, and use of evidence on the cost of delivering immunization services, and to build country capacity around generation and use of cost evidence to work towards sustainable and predictable financing for vaccine delivery. Today, we are discussing the Immunization Delivery Cost Catalog, or IDCC, which was developed under our Global Research and Analytics Program, where we are working to ensure that immunization delivery cost data is globally accessible and easy to interpret. But as part of the ICANN, we are also supporting costing immunization studies in four countries, India, Indonesia, Tanzania, and Vietnam. And we are working with policymakers in these four countries on interpretation and use of cost evidence in planning and program decision making. The IDCC is a product of a systematic review where we sought to answer the question, what are the unit costs of vaccine delivery across different LMICs or low and middle income countries and through a variety of delivery strategies, including health facility delivery, school delivery, et cetera. The ICANN team defined delivery costs as the costs associated with delivering immunizations to target populations, exclusive of vaccine costs. Delivery costs may include cost categories such as paid and volunteer human resources, cold chain equipment and overheads, training and capacity building, et cetera. For the systematic review, we considered peer-reviewed articles and reports, as well as gray literature, published between January 2005 and April 2018. We considered over 15,000 articles and reports, and from this, we extracted 62 articles, data from 62 articles and reports, and added 211 data records, including more one or more unit costs to the IDCC. So these data are, records are accessible in both a Microsoft Excel tool and a web tool, which present over 400 immunization delivery unit costs, all in 2016 US dollars, 
including cost per dose, cost per capita, cost per full immunization, including full immunization of a vaccine, as well as fully immunized child, and cost per person in the target population. We also developed seven pooled immunization delivery unit cost estimates or cost ranges. Here you will see a screenshot of the web version of the IDCC, which is available at immunizationeconomics.org slash ICANN. On the top left of the web page, you will see a black button, which you can click on to download the Excel version of the IDCC. In both web and Excel versions, you can filter on specific characteristics, such as country or region, income level, vaccine and or delivery strategy. In both ver versions, each row is a data record. So what if you would like to know what are the cost, the delivery costs of HPV in Sub-Saharan Africa using non-facility based delivery strategies? I'm now going to show you the web version of the IDCC and we'll do a quick example. So we are interested in Sub-Saharan Africa as the region. So I will go into this filter section, scroll down until I find Sub-Saharan Africa and select it. We're also interested in looking at a specific vaccine. So I'll go to the vaccine section and scroll down until we find HPV. And we're interested in non-facility delivery. So let's look at all of the delivery strategies except for health facility. So in both the web and Excel version of the IDCC, we have summary sections. On the web version, you'll see here in this pink peach color, a summary of what you have selected. So out of 211 records total in the IDCC, we've selected 21 records, which include data from four different countries and three different types of delivery strategies. On the right, you'll see your selections. So we've chosen Sub-Saharan Africa for the region, HPV for the vaccines, and then a variety of delivery strategies. As I scroll down, you can see your records. Again, each row is one record, and each record may include more than one unit cost. So let's take this first row for an example. We see here that this data come from Rwanda. Um, on HPV, delivery strategy is school. And on the right, we have unit costs exclusive of vaccine costs. So we have cost per dose and cost per fully immunized child for this record. Now, this is just a basic view. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper into the data, you can click on any of the blue text to see an advanced view of the data where you can find information on study background, study design, more information on the unit costs, information on cost categories and which ones were included, as well as a reference so you can find the article that the data come from. Now, we selected 21 records there are 10 on this sheet. Down at the bottom right here, you can see that you can select, you can go to pages two and three to view more data. You can get the data set if you'd like, and it will come up in an Excel version with only the data that you've selected. Or again, you can download the Excel IDCC and see the data there. Just want to mention a couple of tips for using the IDCC web version. There are some known performance issues using Internet Explorer, so it's best to use another browser. And if you can't see the entire width of the catalog, so if there's a scroll bar that is, is showing at the bottom of the catalog, then you can just zoom out on your, bruise, your browser. 
To help with interpretation and use of the IDCC, we created user guides and how-to videos, as well as a summary report and a methodology note, which are available at immunizationeconomics.org slash ICANN. I will now hand over to Kelsey to discuss the IDCC findings. Yes, thanks, Michaela. I'll give a high level overview of the spread and scope of the data available in the IDCC. This is really just a portion of the analysis that we've done on the data. You can find our full analysis in the summary report, which is available on our website. So let's start by looking at the geographic scope of the data. As you can see from the map, the majority of data in the IDCC comes from Sub-Saharan Africa, representing 59% of all records. Nearly 20% of the data comes from East Asia and the Pacific. In terms of the countries that are represented, at the far right of your screen, you'll see that 32 records come from Vietnam. We also have a large number of records from Uganda, Tanzania and Benin. And in terms of country income levels represented, just over half of the records in the IDCC come from low income countries. You can see that in the bar at the bottom of the map. Lower middle income countries represent 38% of all records and 10% of the data comes from upper, <clears throat> upper middle income countries. On this slide, we have two figures about the vaccines and vaccine schedules that are included in the IDCC. The figure on the left shows single vaccines included in the IDCC, which represent 141 of our 211 data records. 40% of the records which describe the cost of delivering a single vaccine are for HPV, and 18% of records are from uh, are for PCV. In the right-hand figure, we can see information on the schedules of vaccines that are represented in the IDCC. And you'll see there, there's a wide vari variation in the number of antigens included in these schedules, ranging from three to 13. On this slide, we see that the majority of IDCC records represent the cost of delivering a vaccine or schedule of vaccines using health facility-based delivery. That's 60% of the IDCC records. In second place, 16% of records are for the cost of school-based delivery. And the remaining small number of records are for outreach or mobile delivery, campaigns, child health days and weeks, and multiple strategies. This slide is all about the types of costs that are available in the IDCC. So in the left-hand figure, you can see a breakdown between economic, financial, and fiscal costs, as well as full and incremental costs. So the first bar to the left shows that the majority of records present economic costs. So there's 107 economic cost records. The next bar shows there are 71 records presenting financial costs. And the third small bar shows we have 10 records which present fiscal costs. Within each bar, you can see the breakdown between full and incremental costs. So if we go back to that economic cost bar on the far left, you can see that 41% of economic cost records are full costs, 
which is shown in that blue color. 50% of economic cost records are incremental costs, which is shown in light gray. And then the tall bar on the right, the fourth bar there, shows all 211 records in the IDCC, of which 41% are full costs, shown in the blue color, and 53% are incremental costs, again in light gray. The remainder of records did not report whether they were presenting full or economic costs. Then in the figure on the right, figure six, the type of costs included, you can see the breakdown between the four different unit cost uh, types. So we have four uh, different unit costs, which are costs per dose, cost per capita, cost per fully immunized child, and cost per person in the target population. As Michaela mentioned, each record can have one or more unit costs. So while we have 211 total records in the IDCC, there's actually more than 400 different unit costs available. And you can see that the majority of records uh, are presenting costs per dose, which is that bar on the left-hand side. Each bar is broken down into uh, cost, unit cost with and without the vaccine included. So in that cost per dose bar, you can see that 73 of the records include the vaccine cost, that's that blue color, and 127 of the cost per dose records exclude the vaccine cost, which is shown in gray there. So I think we are going to move on to another poll. We'd like to hear from you. If you could please select a response to the question, what other types of summary information would you like to see? And while you answer the poll, Please don't forget, you can use the question feature now or at any time during our presentation to submit a written question to us about the IDCC. And at the end of the presentation, we're going to answer as many questions as we can. So um, I have the poll uh, responses. It looks like 57% of you would like to see the target delivery population information. 62% of you would like to see the, which cost categories are included. 33% of you would like to know more on the quality assessment that we did. And 29% would like to know about study design. This is a bit of a trick question, I have to admit, because in fact, all of this information we have available in our summary report. So no matter what you said you wanted to learn more about, you can find the answer in our summary report, uh, which is available on our website. Uh, and of course, the, the data behind all of that is in the IDCC itself. All right, moving on. So we're going to spend just a few minutes thinking about, uh, talking about the importance of comparable data points. So as you start thinking for yourself, how you might use the IDCC for your own work, whether it be for policy making, planning, budgeting, or maybe for research, we wanted to caution you about the importance of comparable data points. So basically, not all data in the IDCC can be compared equally. 
Um, just imagine that you want to see all records for the cost of introducing HPV and you have in mind that you'll be able to make a simple estimation about the resources that might be required when your country introduces HPV next year. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as just doing a search for HPV, seeing what the minimum and maximum unit cost values are, taking a mean, and then you have your estimate. As we saw earlier in this webinar, the data in the IDCC are highly heterogeneous, representing different vaccines, different delivery strategies, and costs were estimated using different methods as well. Because of these differences, there are certain types of data that you simply cannot compare. So imagine you wanted to know the you have two data points. One is the economic incremental cost per dose for facility, uh, for school-based delivery, I should say. And the second is the financial full cost per fully immunized child for health facility-based delivery. Are these two points comparable? The answer is absolutely not. So to start with, the unit cost itself is different. The first one is looking at cost per dose, the second looking at cost per fully immunized child. Also, the types of costs are different. The first one is looking at economic costs, the second at financial costs. And of course, the delivery strategies are also different. The first is looking at school-based delivery, the second health facility-based delivery. So if you were trying to compare these points or use them together in a single budget estimation, for example, it would be like comparing apples and oranges. They're just not at all the same things. So with that word of caution, uh, I, we wanted to suggest some key criteria that you should take into consideration when looking for comparable records. So we've prepared this table, which breaks down the criteria as must-haves, probably important to have, and might be important to have. And then there's a section on some criteria that you might want to consider depending on the question that you're trying to answer. Let's just spend a couple of minutes looking at the must-have criteria. So here there's five criteria that you really need to ensure match so that you're measuring the same types of costs or the data that you're looking at is measuring the same types of costs. So first of all, economic, financial, uh, or fiscal costs, you need to know uh, what type of costs the, each record is presenting. All of these measure something quite different. So as we said in the, the previous example, don't try to compare economic and financial because they are very different. It's the same thing uh, with full and incremental costing. These are two very different things. Some of the estimates in the IDCC only look at introduction or startup costs, while others are only concerned with the recurrent or ongoing costs. And some present both introduction, startup, and recurrent ongoing costs. Again, these are apples and oranges, right? Two very different types uh, of costs. So we wouldn't want to necessarily lump them in a single estimate. Same thing with routine delivery versus delivery in a supplemental immunization activity. These are two very different delivery modalities which would have different costs as well. And the last variable that we think is really a must have uh, is supply chain only. What do we mean by that? There's some records in the IDCC which are only presenting the supply chain related costs of delivering the vaccine. So there's 15 different cost categories that may be included in each record. 
the supply chain only records probably only include three or four of those 15 cost categories. So you certainly wouldn't want to compare a record that only looks at the supply chain costs with three cost categories with a record that's looking at the full um, 15 cost categories, for example, focusing not just on supply chain, but all aspects of delivering a vaccine. So we really encourage you to uh, be careful with how you try to compare data um, and to keep these key criteria in mind. In our methodology report, which is available on our website, we have definitions of each of these terms, each of these comparability criteria, as well as the ones in the probably important to have, the might be important to have, and the it depends boxes. So I encourage you to look at the methodology note and to better understand what we mean by each of these criteria and how you can use them to, to make sure that you're looking at comparable points. Ultimately, I think some decisions you have to make for yourself as the user based on the type of um, the reason that you're looking at this costing data. So if you're trying to figure out, well, would data from other sub-Saharan African countries be applicable to me living in Tanzania, for example, or can I look at data from all low-income countries to get an idea of cost ranges for school-based delivery of HPV, given that I am located in a low-income country? So it's not a simple yes or no answer. It just really depends on your situation. What I can say, though, the IDCC is really designed to be a one-stop shop for all available immunization delivery unit cost data. By presenting this data in a single place, in an easily searchable database, we really hope that it can be used to supplement or even replace expensive, time-consuming costing studies or those back-of-the-envelope, very rough estimates that we've all done, which are based on maybe historical budgets. So just keep in mind these key comparability criteria as you search, particularly the five must-haves and probably also the, the two probably important to have criteria. But as long as you keep those in mind, I, I encourage you to keep an open mind about using data from other settings. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, oh, my country is so unique, we can't be compared with our neighbor, we're definitely different from other countries in the region, but Really, as you look through the data, you might actually see that costs are not so different between neighboring countries or maybe countries in the same income group. So I really hope that you'll be able to find comparable data points that you can use for whatever your purpose is, whether it be planning, policy making, budgeting, or research. So to give you uh, an example of how we have applied these comparability criteria, we developed what we're calling pooled estimates. A pooled estimate takes four or more comparable data records, which might come from different studies or reports, different countries, they might be for different vaccines. And using those four or more comparable data records, we've developed cost ranges uh, or these pooled estimates. So we are showing you what the minimum and maximum values are amongst those four or more comparable records. And we've also calculated the mean and the median. In our pooled estimates, we tell you which vaccines countries and delivery strategies have been included. 
we have two different presentation formats. So the box and whisker plot on the left is good if you're maybe a more visual person. Uh, some data nerds like myself might prefer the, the table on the right. They're presenting the same pooled estimate. The only real difference is that the table on the right shows some additional information which might help you to better understand the underlying data that's gone into the pooled, pooled estimate. So just to walk you through very quickly, um, the box and whisker plot, you'll see that the type of unit cost is described below the figure. So here we're looking at the economic cost per fully immunized child, and we include the definition of fully immunized. And we're looking at health facility-based delivery and the use of multiple delivery strategies. You'll see that each point in the box and whisker plot, each color and shape, is a different data record. And the shapes are showing you different delivery strategies. And the colors are showing you which country each record or unit cost comes from. The blue box in the middle is showing you the 25 percentile to 75th percentile uh, range. And then you'll see that the bottom estimate that $8.13 and the top estimate of $96.16 those show you uh, your delivery cost range. So we have this and six other pooled estimates available on our website, uh, which is immunizationeconomics.org slash ICANN. So please check those out if you are interested. And also to let you know, we're continuing to do more analysis on the data and we expect to release some new pooled estimates next year. So you can check for those as well. So just to wrap us up then in terms of what we know about the comparable data in the IDCC, the main takeaway messages are health facility-based delivery is less expensive than other delivery strategies. So facility-based delivery is less expensive than school-based, than outreach mobile, than campaigns, and than child uh, health days or weeks or national immunization days or weeks. We do see huge variability in the data, even amongst comparable data points. So that pooled estimate that we just looked at ranged from $8 to over $96. So that's a very wide cost range, even though we've determined that those records are looking at the same things. We also see variability by country income level. So we, we have found that higher income countries have higher delivery costs. So with that said, um, I would like to remind you to please continue to submit questions uh, through the question feature in uh, the webinar software. Um, and we're happy to answer as many of those as we can. One final poll before we move into the Q&A part of our webinar. If you could please let us know how you plan to use the IDCC in your work. Are you going to use it for annual budgeting and planning? Maybe for multi-year planning such as the CMYP or Gavi? Maybe for research? immunization financing advocacy, and it's also okay to say that you're not planning to use it. And the responses are in. 
So it looks like the majority of you, 75%, are planning to use the IDCC for research. 50% of you are planning to use it for immunization financing advocacy. A quarter of you for annual budgeting and planning. And 13% for multi-year planning. No one said that they're not planning to use it, so that makes us extremely happy. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Annette, who will moderate the Q&A portion of our webinar. Great, thanks, Kelsey. And, and a huge thanks to Kelsey and Michaela. As you can see, this uh, IDCC has been a labor of love and there's a lot of information in it and companion materials. So we're very thrilled to just give you a, a little bit of an overview today, but we realize that there are probably a lot of questions um, coming up as you look through the materials that we would love to clarify both today and, and going forward. So we had quite a few questions come through and encourage you to continue submitting questions as you go. But why don't we get started with a, a couple right off of the bat. There was one question regarding uh, what are the data that are included in the IDCC? Are they only from published papers? And what if there is no specific research or cost estimate uh, in a specific country. Does that mean that the IDCC does not have any data for that country? Uh, and are there any plans to, I'm adding this last part, are there any plans to, um, to, to try to include data for, which, for countries for which data is not currently available? So maybe Kelsey, can you tackle that one? Sure, great question. So the data included in the IDC is both published articles and gray literature. So reports, dissertations, theses, those types of resources. We have put out several calls for gray literature. I think there's probably more out there. So if you're thinking, ah, I did a study on the cost of PCV introduction in X country and I don't see it in the IDCC, please, please, please send it to us and we would be more than happy to review it and consider including it. Uh, at this point, the IDCC only includes data that we've extracted from these published and gray resources. So if there's no research published or gray or cost estimates for a particular country or a particular vaccine, then there's no data in the IDCC for that country or vaccine. We are working with a partner uh, to do some modeling using the IDCC data so that more estimates could be made available and these would cover countries that don't have data currently available, vaccines where we don't have a lot of data available, et cetera. Uh, so that's coming uh, down the road and we're also going to be refreshing the IDCC with new published articles as well as any other gray literature that comes in. We'll be starting that process early next year so please definitely look for a call for gray literature, or you can, you can always submit it to us uh, using our email address, ican at thinkwell.global. Great, thanks Kelsey. Here's, here's another question. Did you split the costs by campaign and routine delivery? How, how are the data records presented so you understand campaign, campaign, SIA, routine delivery, and so on. Uh, and this is a, a measles-specific question. Kelsey, you want to tackle that one? Sure. Another great question. So definitely, we think the, the costs of campaigns and routine delivery are very different. So there's several different um, variables that you can use in the IDCC to filter out 
the campaigns from the routine delivery. So you can either do that by delivery strategy. So campaign is one of the delivery strategies versus routine delivery, which you might say is health facility. Or you can also use uh, one of the other variables, which specifically separates out routine from SIA, supplementary immunization activities under which campaigns usually fall. Great. Uh, so a, a question about the, the quality of the data. Um, how, do, how did you assess the quality? And so how do, how do users, um, how, how can they know the quality and, and uh, use that as, as a factor in how they, they reference the, the underlying data in the IDCC? Kelsey? So we have extracted data from articles and reports as it was reported by the study authors. There is always some ambiguity in reporting. So where we were not able to determine, you know, did, did they do economic costing or was this financial costing, for example? We haven't excluded that data from our IDCC, but we have noted in the appropriate column where we indicate if it's economic, financial, or fiscal costing that we were not able to tell. So that's one way that you can um, see all of the data available and also see sort of where the, the holes were. We've also done a quality assessment of each um, article or report, and we've looked at 14 different criteria to judge the quality of the write-up as provided. And, and we do want to distinguish, you know, there might be some really great studies out there that the write-up fell a bit short for whatever reason. You know, journals always have limitations on the number of words. You end up cutting things that, in hindsight, were really important. So we've, we've really tried to assess the, the quality of the reporting uh, as best we could. Um, and some of the, the criteria that we looked at were, you know, was the type of costing clearly uh, described, were the methods clearly described, um, were all relevant cost categories included, these types of things. So you can find a quality assessment column in the IDCC with a score that we have uh, determined on a one to three scale, and you can find in our methodology and our summary reports uh, more information on how we did that scoring and what it means. Thanks, Kelsey. And, then, and a follow-up question that is, is related. Uh, we had a question come through about uh, the definition of incremental costs. So what, for example, did we do if we found that the, the study author, for example, might have used a different definition than, than what, what we would use as marginal costs? Um, or if we, we found, in a, for example, an incorrect usage of societal costs? How did we make a note of those sort of discrepancies from what we understand as standard definitions? How do we note that in the in the IDCC and how can users access that, that detail? Another great question. So some similar unit cost repositories have tried to standardize um, a bit more the data. So they extracted it and then there was a process of sort of converting it to common uh, terminology. We have not done that. So we have extracted the data as it was reported, but where we noticed that, for example, they use the word incremental, but it doesn't really sound like what they did was incremental costing. We have inserted a comment in the IDCC uh, to note that the authors reported this was incremental costing, but it appears that it is actually full costing. So always check out the comments or other information column. There's one column with uh, those comments or other information for each section in the IDCC. So if you're reading about the methods 
there will be a comment or other information column for that method section where you can get additional information and see if we've noted anything, uh, any discrepancies that we found. And in terms of the, the definition of incremental itself, normally when we say incremental costing, we're talking about the additional costs. And when it's for vaccines, it's normally the additional costs that would be needed uh, if you were to add a vaccine to um, a schedule. So if you're introducing PCV, for example, then what are the additional costs that uh, will be incurred as a result of that introduction. So there might be some trainings for health workers about how to administer uh, PCV. There's probably going to be an expansion of the cold chain because obviously more storage will be needed. So those types of costs are the incremental or additional costs. Great, we had a, a few questions come through on, on countries. Uh, maybe, Michaela, could you uh, refresh everyone's mind? Which countries are, are we doing primary data collection in? Uh, so specific country research that is a different exercise from the IDCC. And then we also had a question about whether uh, data for Sudan are, are available. Can you tackle that, Michaela? Sure, so we're carrying out research in four countries, India, Indonesia, Tanzania, and Vietnam. And at this time, we do not have cost data for Sudan available in the IDCC. Um, but, you know, as we do refreshes, hopefully we'll get some, some articles that we can add data from. Another question on countries, this one's for you, Kelsey. What determined the choice of countries included in the pooled estimate? So the pooled estimates are based on four or more comparable data records. So we undertook a massive, massive, massive um, exploration of the data and we considered all sorts of different combinations uh, of data to try to find these comparable records. So we did not uh, try to lump countries together to begin with. So we didn't say, okay, let's only look at data from uh, these five countries and see if we can find anything comparable. No, in fact, we started with our must have comparability criteria. And then as we went down to the probably need to have, might be nice to have, we went eliminating records, records, and what we were left with uh, we then looked at those records in more detail to see if they were, in fact, comparable. So uh, that's how we ended up with pooled estimates, which might contain data from, for example, Rwanda, Uganda, uh, Moldova, Benin, Ghana, Zambia, and Honduras. It seems like maybe a, a unique combination of countries, but in fact, um, the data from those countries matches on all of our must-have criteria, probably nice to have, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that was how we got to, to those countries. Great. We have about five more minutes for questions and a lot of questions. Uh, for those that we cannot answer, we will we'll find a way to, uh, to try to get you um, the, the answers you seek. A, a lot of questions came through as a follow-up to the, the discussion on quality. Um, I think the, the general gist is, is the quality assessment based on our op opinion, Thinkwell's opinion of what is relevant or on some other scoring or rating system that has already been published or released? Kelsey? We considered many different published and well-known quality assessment um, systems. You can find a full list of those in our methodology report. And based on those, many of them are just general for costing. So we tried to think which of those elements, which might be in existing quality uh, assessment systems are relevant for immunization costing and which 
um, which elements are not currently represented in those existing quality assessment criteria that we need to add in. So it was really a combination of drawing from uh, well-known, uh, widely used quality assessment criteria and then adapting it so it really fits for immunization costing. Thanks. Uh, Michaela, a question to you about the Excel tool and, and just what is the, the value of this tool? How is it any different from, from the web version? Is there additional information that, that we should be using in that one? Of course. Um, so the, the downloadable Excel IDCC is great, first of all, if you have limited connectivity um, or will be traveling somewhere that has limited connectivity, but also there there is a lot more data available in the Excel version of the IDCC and you will be able to filter on specific data features that we haven't built in a filter for. So for example, if you'd like to look at data specific to certain cat, uh, cost categories, you can go into the Excel IDCC data sheet and use the Excel filter feature to actually select the specific cost category information that you'd like to see. Great, thanks. Kelsey, I have a four-part question for you about uh, the type of data included. Uh, so one, can you, can you take a moment to um, describe the data available on wasted rate, wastage rates? Uh, another question regarding whether the data in the IDC is pr from primary data collection or if it also includes, I guess, secondary data collection. A third question on whether maternal vac vaccination strategies, if there's data available on maternal vaccination strategies. And then finally, any reflections that you could share on uh, why there's so much data available on HPV? Yeah, great questions. Um, so in terms of the wastage rates, most of the Articles and reports did not report clearly their wastage rates, so that was not one of the criteria that we extracted. In terms of primary and secondary data, so one of our inclusion criteria for the systematic review was that the article or report had to primarily report primary data. I think anyone who's done a costing study themselves knows that there's always some secondary data uh, that you use. You're going to access expenditure reports, um, et cetera, et cetera. But there had to be a high level of primary data um, collection done in order to for the study to meet our inclusion criteria. On the question on maternal vaccination strategies, yes, we do have data on uh, TT, for example, so you can easily search both in the web version and the Excel for uh, data on TT. Um, and why is there so much HPV data? Yeah, I think that's because there's a, there's a growing sense that we need more cost data and there's also been in recent years a large number of introductions of HPV. So the combination of those two, you know, people realizing that they need to report on costs and then more people introducing HPV has produced all of these great uh, studies and, and records that are in our IDCC. Um, and I expect that in the coming years we'll actually see even more data on HPV as it becomes uh, rolled out more widely. Great. Thanks, Kelsey and Michaela. And we have just a minute before the webinar will close. And I recognize we have a lot of additional questions that came through that we were not able to address. And what I, what I recommend in the invitation for the webinar and on the final page of um, the slide deck, you'll see an email address. And if you do not get a question answered or have a follow-up question, please do send it through and we will um, do our best to get back to you uh, on that. Uh, and very much want to thank you for your interest in this webinar and your excellent questions. We hope you found the webinar informative and useful. We will be 
putting a recording and the slide deck on our website, which is uh, immunizationeconomics.org slash ICANN. And also want to remind you that there are other useful resources on the website. There are how-to videos and user guides that go into, into greater depth than we could today on, on how to use the Excel and web versions. We also have our summary report of findings, our first poll. Um, uh, you indicated some areas about the data that you'd be interested in learning about more. So the, that can be available in the summary report. A methodology note, which goes into great lengths on the methods for the systematic review and for the, the pooled analysis. And a reminder that in uh, 2019, we will be um, refreshing some of these analyses and the, the entire systematic review to ensure that any new published data is, is included. Um, so if you don't have, if you have questions about the IDCC as, as you use the, the resources and you can't find an answer online, please do reach out to us uh, using the email address shown. And um, also let us know how you're using the IDCC and if you have any suggestions for improvements that will really help us as we refresh the IDCC going forward. And, and finally, as we exit the webinar, um, we ask that you complete a very brief survey uh, just so we better know how to improve future webinars. And you can also recommend uh, topics to suggest for, for an additional webinar. So thank you so much for your participation and great questions. And we're looking forward to continuing to engage with you going forward.